ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಆರ್ ಅಶೋಕಮಣಿ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಧನಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಿ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ತಾಂಬರಂ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಫಿಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಅನಾ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ಈ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಗೈಡಿಂಗ್ ತ್ರೀ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ he has more than 44 years of ug and pg teaching experience and 33 years of research experience 14 research scholars have obtained doctorate under his guidance in the area of material science and solid state physics he has more than 150 research publications to his credit of which 90 are in international journals he has authored a book on solid state physics which is an international publication he has participated in several international conferences both in india as well as in foreign countries such as usa uk france germany italy and yugoslavia he has been a guest scientist at ictp italy several times he is a fellow and treasurer of tamil nadu academy of sciences Welcome to the UGC lecture series on applied electronics. We have been going through a course of lectures on crystal structures and properties of materials and these lectures are intended for the applied electronics students. In this lecture number 14 the contents will be as follows Dulong and Petit's law. Einstein's model and Debye's theory. In the previous lectures we have been trying to understand the thermal property namely the specific heat of solids. This has been one of the long standing problems. It was observed by Dulong and Petit that the specific heat of all solids they were found to be nearly equal to 6 calories per mole per degree and this is the experimental observation they gave the law and uh, the classical theory as I told you in the previous lecture it assumes that uh, the solid contains n atoms it is equivalent to 3 n oscillators the classical oscillator will have an energy k t and so the energy of the solid will be 3 n k t and therefore the derivative of this energy with respect to temperature that is a specific heat will be equal to 3 r. So, the Dulong and Petit's law simply states C v that is a specific heat of all solids should be equal to 3 r. Now, this was uh, incapable of explaining the variation of specific heat with respect to temperature. Now, what happens is what Dulong and Petit told was uh, correct as long as you keep the solid at uh, room temperature or at higher temperatures, but at low temperatures the heat capacity falls off and the reduction in the heat capacity as a function of temperature could not be explained on the basis of the classical theory. Therefore, it was left to Einstein to give an explanation the important point to be remembered is Einstein was uh, one of the first persons to introduce quantum mechanical ideas into solid state physics. Every atom in a crystalline solid if uh, you have got atoms like this at any given temperature the atoms will be vibrating even at 0 Kelvin they will be vibrating and so what he did was uh, he took into account the energy that we possess by each and every atomic oscillator as given by Max Planck that is you write E n is equal to n h nu. The other important points which are to be remembered are what Einstein did was number 1 he assumed all atoms to vibrate with a same frequency that is a very important point and secondly they are independently vibrating ok you should remember these two points all atoms are vibrating with the same frequency in a given solid and these oscillators are independent oscillators they are not coupled to each other right they are 
independent oscillators. And uh, I told you in the last lecture the variation of heat capacity with respect to temperature it uh, had a exponential fall according to Einstein's theory. The expression which he obtained I showed in the last lecture the fall was uh, more rapid than what it should be. You see the Einstein model the continuous line gives the heat capacity calculated using Einstein's theory the so called Einstein model, but on the contrary experimental points indicate the values for uh, copper, silver, silicon and uh, diamond as a function of temperature right. How the heat capacity falls as a function of temperature that is shown by the dots and uh, the squares circles and so on that they are the experimental points. The experimental points agree very well with what you call as the Debye model. So, we have to go beyond Einstein model. Einstein model has the natural problem it is uh, insufficient to explain the experimental observations. So, you have to go to Debye model. What is the work that was done by the great man Peter Debye. What Debye thought was uh, to consider the solid as a continuum in, instead of considering the solid as if they are made up of atoms instead of uh, individual atoms being considered he considered a solid as a continuum. Supposing I have a rubber band or a thread I have a piece of thread and I can make the thread to vibrate and uh, you can have one loop the whole string you can have one loop or as I told you in the previous lecture you would have done Kunz tube experiment in which you can have either in the same length L you can have one loop or two loops and so on. And so, when you consider a solid as a continuum it is a, you can talk of elastic waves or possible modes of vibrations. What I mean by this is you can have one loop or two loops or three loops the number of uh, stationary waves that you obtain in a solid can vary or in other words instead of a single frequency what Debye talked about was uh, a continuous frequency spectrum that means the solid has uh, the wave the sound waves or the elastic waves that are passing through a solid have all possible frequencies. And again at this point itself I would like to tell uh, that um, Debye was uh, unaware of uh, how to uh, have the, the maximum frequency. L let us uh, go on to the Debye model. So, Debye realized that the solid should be treated as a continuum instead of looking at the various atoms as was done by Einstein. So, in 1912 he started the discussion on the vibration modes of a continuous solid. Before you go to a continuous three dimensional solid as I told you you look at a string a one dimensional solid right. So, you start with a string of length L. So, it is a one dimensional string and you write down the equation for the wave propagation the wave equation corresponding to the one dimensional string will go as dou square u by dou x square is equal to 1 by c square dou square u by dou t square where u stands for the displacement of the wave and x is uh, and the point at which you measure the displacement and c is the velocity of the wave. Okay this is what you are having in the case of a one dimensional string and the displacement measured at a given point and at a given instant of time t you have a one dimensional string and the displacement you know you have nodes anti nodes and so on. And so, the displacement can have any value. So, the displacement u that is measured at a given point x at a given time t will be equal to that is the solution of the above equation right. The solution will be 
a times that is the maximum displacement or is called the amplitude sin into n pi x by l where l is the length of the one dimensional string cos 2 pi times nu n into t. The nu suffix n refers to the frequency of the wave that is being propagated through the one dimensional string and uh, as I told you t is the time at which uh, the display is measured and a is um, the amplitude and so on and so this is what you have the more important thing is uh, n is a um, positive integer. Now, we are going to generalize it to a three dimensional case this is for a one dimensional string right. Uh, solids are not uh, one dimensional objects they are uh, three dimensional things this particular thing should be extended to a three dimensional case. Now, before that we will go through the wavelengths and the frequencies of the possible vibrations. Now, new suffix n refers to the different frequencies and so the possible frequencies that you will have will be lambda n the wavelength that will be having will be 2 l by n. So, n will be an integer. So, the fundamental wavelength lambda will be when n is 1 that will be 2 l if n is 2 it will be lambda will be simply l if uh, n is 3 then we will have corresponding wavelength. What I am trying to tell you is the different wavelengths or the different frequencies that you can think of in a one dimensional string are given by this expression for wavelength and the other expression for the frequency. As I told you you have take a one dimensional string and uh, you can have either one loop or two loops and the three loops and so on. So, the um, if you have got one loop the entire length will be equal to the length of one loop. If you have got two loops then the length of two loops will be equal to the length of the string. Now, therefore, the frequency will keep on increasing and uh, the wavelength will decrease and so on. Now, therefore, the possible wavelengths will be as I told you when n is 1 the maximum wavelength lambda will be equal to 2 l if n is 2 the wavelength comes down the frequency will go up. So, the frequencies will be c by lambda n or equal to c times n divided by 2 l where n is the integer. In this one dimensional case each integer n corresponds to a discrete frequency the important point to be remembered is you have nu n this is a frequency that corresponds to n right a particular frequency particular n value n is 1 that corresponds to a particular frequency n equal to 2 that corresponds to a different frequency n is 3 corresponds to some other frequency. So, instead of a single frequency which was thought of by Einstein now we have got different frequencies right different frequencies with which the wave can travel through the medium the elastic wave or the sound wave or whatever the you have a one dimensional string in the one dimensional string the possible vibrational frequencies are given by the expression of this kind right nu n will be equal to c n divided by 2 l. In this one dimensional case each integer corresponds to a discrete frequency vibration. Then you ask the question how many modes will be there in a frequency range d nu you take nu and nu plus d nu if you take the frequency along the y axis you have got nu here d nu will be here in this frequency interval how many modes of vibration will be there. So, your d n will be from this you have got n will be equal to 2 l by nu n right 2 l by or 2 l by c divided by okay, this is a kind of thing will be lambda n and so on. So, you can write d n to be equal to 2 l by c into d nu right you have got nu here and uh, n here. So, d n will be the number of modes of vibrations that you can have in a small frequency interval d nu this is all what you have to learn about the one dimensional case. Then we pass on to a three dimensional case. Now, why should you go to three dimensional because solids are three dimensional objects. Now, therefore, 
you generalize the equation that you had in this uh, form at this point we will have a short break and we will resume with the rest of the things after the break. Welcome back after the break. I told you about uh, the possible modes of vibrations or how many modes of vibrations you can have in a string. You take a thread and how many modes you can have in a small frequency interval that is uh, generalized to a three dimensional elastic continuum a three dimensional solid. You consider a solid as a elastic medium like uh, a three dimensional a piece of rubber right. So, now you generalize it dou square u by dou square plus dou square u by dou i square dou square u by dou z square that will be equal to 1 by c square into dou square u by dou t square ok. The possible standing wave solutions or whatever that you had earlier instead of uh, sin n pi x by l what I am going to do now in the third dimensional case I will have n x n y n z. I told you that n is a positive integer similarly now the boundary condition requires that your n x n y n z all of them should be positive integers ok that is important point n x n y n z should all be positive integers. Again the another point is for every n that you have got here it refers to a discrete frequency every n refers to or corresponds to a discrete frequency. Now, I am going to have n x n y n z ok all of them should be integers. So, now you move on to three dimensional case the solution you are having wherein you find n x n y n z ok. Now, all of them should be integers. So, let us uh, now write down the solution that you want to have that connects n x n y n z to the possible frequencies right you have got uh, 4 times l square nu square by c square where l is the length of uh, the solid you can have a cubical solid where uh, l will be the length of each side n x n y n z are the integers and nu is the frequency of the wave that can travel through the solid ok. Substituting the above solution the, as you had earlier substituting the this solution here you get this equation ok. This is the equation of central importance the reason why I am telling this equation is importance for every n x n y n z there will be a particular frequency right. So, you can have n x 1 n y 1 n z 1 then you can substitute that then l is a constant ok l is the length of uh, the cube. So, c is the velocity of the wave if you assume the velocity of the wave should be a constant the velocity of the wave c is a constant l is a constant and uh, here you got l pi and so on therefore, the only variable is uh, nu and so there is a connection between the frequency nu and your n x n y n z. Now, what I would like to impress upon you is the fact that n x n y n z will have positive integral values positive integers ok and um, for a given set n x n y n z it may be 1 1 1 or 2 1 1 or 2 3 4 n x can, can be 2 3 4 and by assigning various values for n x n y n z you are getting a particular frequency. So, what I am going to do now I am going to generate what is called a integer space can you tell me at this point whether you have come across such an integer space in solid state physics elsewhere. Now, when I am going to talk about density of states with respect to energy from the particle in a box problem one calculates what is called the density of states how many energy levels will be there in the valence band or in the conduction band in the case of semiconductors I will be using a integer space the same 
concept will be used. I am trying to tell you the connection between what you find in the chapter on semiconductor physics or semiconductor electronics and uh, what you read in the, the problem of the specific heat. So, the integer space that I am going to generate is common to both these things. So, it may be there in other areas as well. So, let me now generate the integer space. I have got uh, origin and this point may be 1 1 in the two dimensional space obviously this is 1 here and again you are uh, going through 1 along the y direction the n y here the n x here n is here. So, in two dimensional space these go through the one point here right there is another point here what are the coordinates or the what are the integers which correspond to this that will be 1 here 1 here right when you n x is 1 ok n y is 1. So, if you take this point what are the values for n x and n y n x is 1 2 n x is 2 and n y is 1 the point I want to emphasize is every point that I have in this diagram corresponds to a discrete frequency because of the relation right I am having 1 1 or 2 1 that corresponds to a particular frequency. So, every set of integers which I assign every set of integers n x n y n z it corresponds to a particular well defined frequency. I am going to calculate how many possible modes of vibrations or how many news I can have in a interval suppose this corresponds to a frequency nu and this corresponds to a frequency nu plus d nu this range corresponds to the frequency interval d nu or in other words in the length scale it corresponds to d or the frequency domain this corresponds to nu and this corresponds to nu plus d nu ok. So, in this range d nu how many modes are there as I told you every point corresponds to a particular mode what I should do now in the integer space how many points are there between nu and nu plus d nu and not only that you should see that I should not count all the points I should see that n x n y n z all of them should be whether n y can be negative or n z can be negative I told you initially the boundary conditions demand that n x n y all of them should be positive there should be positive integers now therefore, you should look at only this region right in the two dimensional space you have got uh, your n x is positive this is a positive quadrant right. If you go here your um, n x becomes negative if you go here both n x and n y will become negative if you go here n y will become negative right n x will be positive, but I need my n x n y should be positive integers in the two dimensional space if you go to three dimensions it is a sphere what I am showing here they are circles right. Now, you should visualize a sphere a football like thing and I have a frequency here nu all the points on this uh, the sphere will have cor will correspond to frequency nu and I have a bigger sphere the this range of uh, width d or corresponds to the most of vibrations which lie between nu and nu plus d nu. So, what should I do now I have to find out how many points are there in three dimensional space in what volume the frequency the most of vibrations will lie in the frequency range d nu and that is equivalent to d or supposing have a point here a point here 1 centimeter separated by 1 centimeter this point lies here another point lies here another point lies here another point lies here you have got 1 2 3 4 and so in this you have got uh, one person sitting here one person sitting here one person. So, every 1 centimeter a person can sit right assume that in 1 centimeter you have got uh, a person sitting here another person sitting here depending upon three dimension volume in every unit volume there will be one positive set of integers right. So, this point should be understood properly and so you have to take 
the volume unit volume here such that n x n y n z all of them will be positive in two dimensions n x n y will be positive in one fourth of the quadrant right is the region in which n x n y will be positive in three dimensions it will be 4 pi r square d r will give you the volume of the annular ring 4 pi r square d r will give you the volume of the annular ring out of this volume how much will be assigned or how much can be considered so that your n x n y n z all of them will be positive only one eighth of or of the total volume should be considered because only for that volume n x n y n z all of them will be positive. The number of points which are lying between r and r plus d r for which n x n y n z are all positive is given by one eighth of the volume of the spherical shell of thickness d r this is what I showed just now. So, you are have to consider 1 by 8 4 pi r square d r that is the volume not only volume for every unit volume you can have 1 meter a person is comfortably sitting uh, another meter 1 meter. So, they are all equal spaced uh, points but therefore, the volume will be equivalent to the number of frequencies because for every unit volume we will be having one point right uh, one point means one finite frequency. So, this volume that I have calculated now that corresponds to the number of possible modes of vibrations I can think of. So, the number of possible modes of vibrations z nu d nu stands for or represents the number of modes of vibrations you can have be between nu and d nu or between r and r plus d r the number of points that you can have will be the same it is 1 by 8 times 4 pi times r square your r square will be so much ok your d r will be given like this right these are d the r r square is uh, 2 l nu by c obviously r square from r square you can get r and from r you will be getting d r because the only variable is nu right d nu is here right. Now, substitute your r square and d r here what do you have 1 by 8 times 4 pi r square d r. So, you write 1 by 8 4 pi times r square is here ok 4 l square nu square with c square d r is uh, here 2 l by c into d nu that comes out to be 4 pi times the volume l cube will be the volume of the solid piece divided by c cube into nu square d nu this gives the total number of possible modes of vibrations that you can think of in a three dimensional continuous solid this is what Debye did this, this expression is, is of importance. Now, you ask the question what is the energy possessed by the solid with every the frequency associate the energy. So, I have to write down the waves I am talking about can be both transverse and uh, longitudinal. So, all these things are to be taken into account when I am calculating the energy of the solid. Let me now summarize as to what we have learned from this lecture. Einstein attempted to explain the variation of heat capacity with respect to temperature by assuming atoms to be independent oscillators vibrating with the same frequency. The variation at low temperatures followed an exponential law in the case of Einstein's model quite at variance with the experimental observation as he showed earlier. So, Debye considered the solid as a continuum and calculated the various possible modes of vibrations. Let me now pass on to the question session what is Dulong and Petit's law. The second question is whether Debye's theory was able to explain the variation of heat capacity with temperature. Question number 3 what is the essential difference between Einstein model and Debye model. With this we come to the end of this lecture the rest of the things we will see in the lectures to come. Thank you. Thank you.